Yes, sir. Hey, what up, Mr. Jones? Everybody. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? Um, I just want to say, wow, this has been so informative. Um, my name is Marlo Jones. I am the uh, editor-in-chief of Pasco Connect Magazine and the founder of Pasco Young Revolutionary Entertainment. I am a uh, fellow actor as well, um, a musician, um, a rapper. Salud. And yes, yeah, salute, man. And I want to say, uh, it, just like listening to you, I've almost went down memory lane again in my own life and my career, just like listening, you know, to you talk about what you, the things you did in your foundation and how music and how acting, how it all correlates together, how it all meshes at the end of the day. And, you know, just listening to it was inspiring. So I want to thank you for sharing your story with with us. And, you know, uh, as we say, sending the ladder down so more people can have this knowledge and this appreciation for the craft of acting and music and, and the arts in general. So I want to thank you for taking the time out. I really do appreciate it. And uh, man, you. you are very talented, very talented. And, um, you know, I was just listening to you and we have so much in common. So we both have some Afro uh, Latino uh, blood running through our veins. Um, and it looks like as well, I was reading about you and you started off doing some rap battles, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was the, that was the core, freestyle sessions and rap battles to get your name out in the street. That, that's exactly how it was uh, for us as well. Me and my cousins would sit around with the instrumental going and we would all kind of, you know, it would all correlate together. But um, it's just such a blessing to be speaking with another actor, another person of color. Um, my question is to you, um, as, an, as a fellow actor, what would your advice be to uh, people of color? Because, you know, in the industry, it's so hard. Um, you know, when I, when I got into the acting industry, 10 years ago, I landed it pure by accident. Oh, I seen a woman who was an agent who said, hey, you have a nice smile. And it, that started a conversation that led me to reading a script, which I never even was taught how to read scripts. And I went in for a cold read and I ended up getting the part of Tyrone. Nice. <laughs> I'll nice. never forget it, but it opened so many doors for me. You know, I was able to, um, become an extra in a feature film that was filmed here in Florida called The Dolphin Tale. And um, that is where I got I to I know meet. that project. I know that project. This guy that I yeah. worked with on Magic City, his son was was on it. Carlos Ramos, I think, or Martinez. Nice, congrats, man. It's, yeah, sorry, thank you. It was, it was that, I, that name sounds familiar, but it was like one of those uh, uh, crowning achievements in, in my mind because it's like, I know I'm only being casted as an extra, but I remember what it was like to stand in line for three hours at Ruth Eckerd Hall for the audition. And I remember like thinking, what is it going to be like if I actually meet Morgan Freeman or Harry huh. Connick Jr. or Ashley Judd? And I remember the last day of set, we were wrapping up in Clearwater and Morgan walked right by me and I like froze. I was just completely nervous. And his uh, hairstylist said, it's okay. You could go and talk to him. And he was so gracious and so humble and so, you know, interested in like, hey, what are you doing? Are you taking theater? And he invited me to his tent, man. And we got to talk and we got to take pictures that, you know, I hold near and dear to my heart. But it was like, it was an experience that I'll just never forget as an actor. And um, I traveled to New York and I lived for a little bit in, with my uncle in Jamaica, Queens. Okay, Jamaica, Queens, Queens, that's where I'm from. Flatbush, flat, flat <laughs> Flatbush. <laughs> Um, nice. So, uh, man, when I got this opportunity to talk to you, I was just like, wow, we have so much in common and we've never even met. And it just goes to show you how we're all connected in this universe some way, somehow. Um, my second question would be for you. Um, what advice do you have for for uh, up and coming actors, people of color that might feel like, you know, they're getting typecast or or stereotyped in these roles? What have you, what advice might you have to the young and up and coming inspiring actors? Um, what I will say is I, I go to a lot of panels. I go to a lot of TV Academy events. Uh, thankfully, the, that, um, that theme and that perspective is changing. And obviously it's always gonna feel like it's not changing fast enough, but people are producing with purpose. A lot more people of color are in positions where they can call the shots, where they can create, 
obviously Tyler Perry being a great example and the type of success that he has motivates other people and also lets the industry know like, hey, like you have to give us a chance to speak. On top of that, there's way too many of us. We affect viewership, we affect uh, demographics so strongly that even um, I saw the president of Hallmark going up and talking and she's like, even if somebody wants to be ignorant as to not be diverse and exclusive, like it just doesn't make sense money-wise. You know, yeah. before they used to try to convince us that like, they're like, oh, uh, for example, I, I remember a lady saying she's Latina and she was like, Latinos don't want to see themselves in positions of power. And you're just like, what? <laughs> Hold on, what? Like, we're not always just, just selling code, you know? Um, right. And the narrative has changed uh, so much so that right now more opportunities are coming. The numbers are starting to balance even better. So like represent yourself to the fullest of your ability and don't feel like you have to be the cliche, the typecast, the stereotype. I remember even for a few years, I had long hair because all I was getting was cartel roles. And, um, and I was, you, you have to stand, grind your feet into the ground and, and be gritty and push and, and push and believe in yourself and stay grounded to yourself. And the world will change around you. If you hold yourself at value, like you will eventually be valued. The numbers are increasing. Um, even with Latinos, I saw that like last year, it was like 5% uh, for 5% of all of the leads go to, go to, um, go to people of that, of, of Latino origin. Uh, that's really small. And if you really want to stand and represent for your people, me being Afro Latino, like you got to fight through that. You got to fight through that. You know, our parents didn't create us by not overcoming and not fighting through things. So honor their effort and push it forward. And then maybe the next generation pushes it forward even further. But if we don't try to play our part, then for sure it'll never change. It'll never get to where we want and need it to be a fair representation. There's, there's too many, there's way too many of us now. We have way too mm -hmm. much of a voice because uh, of necessary evils and because of good things, like people are much more woke. Uh, so we gotta, we gotta continue and take every bit of that momentum that we can and, and just continue representing yourself in the best light. And that's the best thing you could do that each one can do for our people so that they don't have even the chance to be like, oh, oh, this means that, or like, or, or, or this is they, they, these people come from that have that skin tone so that means that they're going to act like this or look like this nope nope we're not going to give them the opportunity to 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 shell us in that box we have way too much way too many kings and queens way too much love way too much passion way too much faith way too much ability to overcome and why are, how, how are we here in this platform right now because we all believe in ourselves because we've all been able to overcome to get to this point I know everybody here has had a tough day in their life, probably multiple. And still, there's a lot of love, a lot of sharing, a lot of care that's happening right here. We, we don't have the right. It, it's bigger than us. We don't have the right to let ourselves down or to let anybody else that needs us mm -hmm. and to push the, to carry the torch down. I certainly agree with you, man. And man, inspiring. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say uh, Anthony Bless for Congress, y'all. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Can we get this, man? I mean... Come on, man. Yeah. He's an inspiring. And I also would just, just like to end it on this. I mean, we did see the Black Panther too now, okay? Now I'm thinking, I'm, I don't know what we can do, but see if we can get me and you in that next sequel coming out. You know, I could be Black Panther, you could be Nemo, whatever you want to do. Yeah. We can get it done. Man, that'll be fun, because that means we're going at each other, and then I'll say we can laugh about it. That sounds like a you great idea, laugh. man. Let's go. Hold Thank on. So much. I'm sending out the note to Marvel real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I left my information in the chat for anybody that uh would like to get a hold of me. Uh it's a you'll you'll see me, uh Marlo Jones. I also left some stuff. I'm a civil rights activist right here too in Tampa Bay. So we're doing a lot of great things here and we appreciate y'all. We really do. Thank you Thank so you. much, Thank Mr. You. Jones. I appreciate you for getting on, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.